The El Chapo escape fears are not unfounded. He tunneled out of the last Mexican prison where he was locked up and rode to freedom on an underground motorcycle. Certainly the most talked about family in the Sinaloa cartel is the Guzman family and its notorious leader, El Chapo. Narco kings, crime bosses, and cartel leaders are meant to dedicate their lives to the underground criminal world. Their story and legacy live on, but they usually don't get to tell it. Being a part of a criminal organization well known for violence and illegal conduct will only land you in one of two places. You either die in a shootout with rival gang members or military personnel, or if you're captured, you're destined to spend the remainder of your life behind bars. Even the most notorious crime bosses like El Chapo cannot escape this fate, even though he did try escaping from prison twice. Now locked away in a top security prison in the United States, the former cartel leader is concocting his plan for the third escape. They say third time's a charm. Will El Chapo finally succeed? Many people think that if they join a gang, they'll have easy access to riches, power, and protection. However, it is the complete opposite. Most cartel and gang members do not live a comfortable life. Yes, they make a lot of money through illegal activities like narcotic trafficking, but in return, they have to actively participate in turf wars, bloodshed, and constant battles with law enforcement. There is no win or lose. It's a lose-lose situation for everyone. Among those people is El Chapo, the former leader of the Sinaloa cartel and infamous narco king. You might have heard the name El Chapo on the news many times. The man's name and reputation exceed his person. So who is this man that everyone fears? This morning, a massive international manhunt for one of the world's most powerful and deadly drug trafficking kingpins is underway. El Chapo's real name is Joaquin Archivaldo Guzman Loreda. Before his arrest, El Chapo was considered one of the most powerful narcotic traffickers in the world. The cartel leader was born on April 4, 1957. He was raised in a poor family in Sinaloa, Mexico. As a kid, El Chapo had to quit school in the third grade to assist his parents with their farming work, causing him to be illiterate. El Chapo was known to be quite a prankster to his friends and family. You could say that the former crime boss had a rough childhood. His father was known to be an abusive man who constantly hurt his children. However, El Chapo ended up receiving most of his father's wrath in an effort to protect his younger siblings from the abuse. His mother was his only emotional support. It was said that El Chapo's father was the person who introduced him to the narcotic trade at an early age. His family made very little income with regular farming. Therefore, they had to find ways to strive for more money. It was around this time that El Chapo and his father started growing marijuana and cultivating opium poppy. El Chapo and his siblings worked to harvest those plants, and their father would sell them to local traders. It was hard work, but they had to do it for the betterment of the family. Except there's one flaw in their plan. El Chapo's father didn't care much for his wife and children and would spend their hard-earned money on liquor and women. After a while, El Chapo was fed up with his father's nonsense and decided to cultivate his marijuana plantation with some of his cousins at the age of 15. He used the money from the plantation to support his mother. You could say that poverty had a hand in shaping El Chapo's criminal career. Not that every poor person should join the narco world, but there's a reason for everything. Soon, El Chapo's father kicked him out of the home, forcing him to leave his hometown and pursue a life of organized crime. It was around this time that Guzman earned the name El Chapo, which translates to Shorty. It was a way for others to make fun of the man's height. No one could have imagined a few decades later, El Chapo became a well-known and feared alias. The cartel leader kickstarted his narcotic career through his uncle, Pedro Aviles Perez, who's basically the pioneer of narcotic trafficking. In 1970, El Chapo began working for Hector El Guerro Palma, a former kingpin and narcotic trafficker assisting him in transporting and overseeing narcotic shipments to the United States. El Chapo was known to be an efficient and ruthless businessman. He would execute smugglers if they were ever late or attempted to mishandle the goods or money. His tactics made him a feared yet productive member of the cartel. El Chapo quickly earned the favor of his boss and was soon introduced to Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, the convicted kingpin and former leader of the legendary Guadalajara cartel, which was the precursor of all modern day cartels. El Chapo initially worked as a chauffeur for Felix Gallardo, but rapidly rose through the ranks and was put in charge of the cartel's logistics. Essentially, his job was to coordinate narcotic shipments from Colombia to Mexico by land, air, and sea. The Guadalajara cartel was flourishing, and El Chapo's career as a middleman for Colombian and Mexican narcotic trafficking was exceptionally successful. 
However, in the 1980s, the Guadalajara cartel made a critical error when they kidnapped and killed DEA agent Enrique Camarena Salazar. This enraged the United States government, prompting Mexican authorities to pursue all three leaders of the cartel. By this point, the Guadalajara cartel was effectively disbanded, but Felix Gallardo was not willing to let authorities wipe out the entire cartel empire. He asked a lawyer to split up his assets, dividing the territories and corridors among minor crime bosses. These territories later became the Gulf Cartel. The Ariano Felix brothers were given the Tijuana Corridor, which controlled parts of Baja California, and later became the Tijuana Cartel. The Carrillo Fuentes family formed the Juarez Cartel in Chihuahua, and of course, the Sinaloa and Pacific Coast routes were assigned to El Chapo and his two companions, Ismael El Mayo Zambada and Palma. The three of them established the modern-day Sinaloa Cartel. El Chapo specifically managed smuggling routes in Tecate, Baja California, as well as Mexicali and San Luis Rio, Colorado, two border crossings connecting Sonora and Baja California with Arizona and California. By then, Guzman was already the most feared capo in the Sinaloa Federation, a vast criminal organization that sends marijuana, cocaine, amphetamine, and heroin to the United States and around the world. After the breakup of the Guadalajara cartel, El Chapo rose to power rapidly. He built the Sinaloa cartel from the ground up, smuggling tons of narcotics into the United States and Europe. The man made millions and was considered the most successful narco king at the time. El Chapo was also the first person to enable the use of distribution cells and long-range tunnels near borders, making it easier for the cartel to traffic large amounts of narcotics across the border without the need for disguises. The narcotic trade had brought El Chapo immense wealth and power. The Drug Enforcement Agency estimated his net worth, and he's probably the only man in the cartel world who had enough affluence and wealth to compare to Pablo Escobar, the legendary Colombian kingpin. El Chapo was at the peak of his glory, and a lot of people wanted to take him down, including rival cartels and the Mexican government. On May 24, 1993, Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo, an archbishop of the Catholic Church in Mexico and a cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church, was mysteriously assassinated. The government concluded that the cardinal was caught in a shootout between the Tijuana and Sinaloa cartels. The public was enraged by this information because Cardinal Posadas was a very important religious figure in the country. However, it was later argued that the death of the cardinal had nothing to do with the cartel, but was a setup by the Mexican government. But that's an entirely different story. The government launched a nationwide manhunt for everyone involved in the killing of the cardinal. They even offered $5 million bounties for each of their arrests. Wanted posters of El Chapo started appearing everywhere, and the crime boss was forced to go into hiding. On June 9, 1993, El Chapo was arrested in Guatemala and extradited to Mexico. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison for narcotic trafficking and murder charges. While incarcerated, El Chapo still managed to run his cartel behind bars with the help of his brother. Sinaloa cartel members reportedly brought suitcases full of cash to bribe the prison guards and ensure their boss was comfortable with his lavish life in prison. The cartel leader remained in prison until 2001 when he was indicted in the United States for money laundering and narcotic trafficking. Mexican officials collaboratively decided to extradite him to the US. However, El Chapo got the news and planned his first escape from prison. At this time, he had influence over all the guards and even the director of the facility. It was easy for El Chapo to bribe them to help him escape the system. El Chapo had someone hide him in a laundry cart and transport him out of town. By the time authorities were alerted, the crime boss was long gone. Another manhunt was organized to search for El Chapo. Unfortunately, this search took them more than a decade. The Sinaloa cartel leader managed to stay out of the way of law enforcement for more than 10 years while still running one of the largest criminal organizations and the narcotic trafficking ring between the Mexican U.S. border. In 2014, some of his bodyguards were captured and they happened to disclose his hiding location to law enforcement officials. On February 16, 2014, the Mexican military followed the advice from El Chapo's bodyguards to locate his former wife's home in Sinaloa, where the cartel was planning to stay for a few days. They were so close to arresting him, yet they had trouble getting through the reinforced steel door, giving El Chapo just enough time to escape through his secret underground tunnels. For the next few days, Mexican officials raided almost every one of the Kingpin's properties, but failed to locate him. It took a combined effort of the Mexican Navy, the DEA, and the U.S. Marshal Service to finally arrest El Chapo. 
on February 22, 2014, at a hotel in Mazatlan. Breaking news this morning, the capture of the man some call Mexico's Osama bin Laden, one of the most wanted criminals in the world and the top illegal drug dealer in the U.S. This time, El Chapo was placed under maximum security at the Federal Social Readaption Center No. 1, a maximum security prison in Almoloya de Juarez. The federal court wanted to extradite the cartel leader to the United States, but El Chapo didn't want to leave the country. But if he stayed, he would face an indefinite number of charges, and he could be sentenced to 300 to 400 years. So what did El Chapo do? He planned his second escape. On July 11, 2015, El Chapo was nowhere to be found in the maximum security prison. The guards went searching for him and found that the cartel boss had escaped through a tunnel under the shower area. Videos capturing the crucial moments before Joaquin El Chapo Guzman escapes from that maximum security prison. Watch as he paces back and forth before taking off the tracking bracelet, monitoring his every move. He walks to his shower area, ducks behind the wall, bends down, and vanishes. Once again, another manhunt was ordered. Now the authorities were furious. El Chapo had gotten the last laugh, twice. This time, they vowed to capture the kingpin once and for all. Finally, in 2016, a citizen complaint came in about armed people in a house located in the city of Los Mochis in Sinaloa. Authorities started monitoring the house for a month and confirmed its suspicious activities. His head covered in a white blanket, the most wanted drug lord in the world, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, led away by authorities after six months on the run. On January 8, 2016, 17 Marines from the Mexican Navy Special Forces, with the aid of the Mexican Army and federal police, raided the residence. However, El Chapo and his lieutenants still managed to escape through a secret tunnel. They ended up stealing a vehicle at gunpoint and started fleeing. A statewide stolen vehicle alert was issued, and federal authorities intercepted the vehicle 12 miles south of Los Mochis, near the town of Juan Jose Rios. Having nowhere to escape, El Chapo tried bribing the on-duty officers, but unfortunately for him, it didn't work. El Chapo was arrested again, and this time, the Mexican authorities wasted no time in extraditing him to the U.S. They formally renewed the process of extradition to the United States two days after he was captured. They couldn't wait to get rid of this man. El Chapo was formally extradited to the United States in 2017. In 2019, he was found guilty on various charges, including narcotic trafficking and murder, and was sentenced to life in prison. El Chapo has been on a crusade since arriving at the Supermax in Colorado to communicate with his attorneys and allow them to deliver documents to his prison cell as he works to concoct a legal move that would result in his unlikely release. Since his sentencing, El Chapo has been staying at a maximum security penitentiary in Colorado. No prisoner or inmates have ever escaped from this prison. Tonight, the I-Team has a letter from El Chapo in which he implies that U.S. prison officials are bullying him because he has escaped before. The I-Team, Chapo says prison authorities are preventing him from receiving attorney documents for new court motions. They always use the excuse that it's because Guzman fled from a Mexican prison, he writes. This is a ridiculous claim used to justify the anomalies. El Chapo claims he has been treated inhumanely and his human rights have been violated by the prison guards. He's now claiming psychological torment and wants to be returned to his homeland. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, like the rest here, segregated and on permanent lockdown 23 hours a day. American and Mexican officials are concerned that this plea is another scheme for El Chapo to escape from captivity. After all, he did escape from prison twice in Mexico. Also, keep in mind that the Sinaloa cartel is still operating at a stronger pace without the presence of El Chapo. His claim of violation comes from the fact that he's in a prison system where everyone is on lockdown to prevent any sneaky business from taking place. At the end of the day, El Chapo has proven himself to be untrustworthy, but at the same time, everyone has the right to speak up if they feel that their natural rights are being violated. Although it is not yet determined whether or not the kingpin will be returning to Mexico, the majority of people, except for the Sinaloa cartel, would feel safer if El Chapo remains in the United States. Whatever the decision may be, hopefully, federal authorities and law enforcement officials will weigh the pros and cons of the situation and put the public safety before anything else. Do you think El Chapo should be allowed to return to Mexico to serve the rest of his sentence? Why or why not? Also, 
please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.